Welcome back to All of Amber's Wands, a study of wands in the wizarding world. I'm Amber, and I wanted to start today off with a special thank you to everyone who has followed this channel and shared it. You make this whole project more magical with your support, so thank you. This episode is going to be about Ron Weasley's wand, specifically his second wand. This is the wand that he got after he broke his pre-owned wand in Chamber of Secrets. As we know, the wand chooses the wizard, and that pre-owned wand was previously Percy's wand. So for Ron's analysis, I wanted to strictly talk about his wand, the wand that chose him. So this is the wand, and this is his wand stats. This wand is made out of willow wood with a unicorn hair core and is 14 inches long. History and culture around Willow all note that it has anti-inflammatory abilities and is often used in medicine to ease pain. It has a strong affiliation with water, rejuvenation, and persistence. This is due to the natural salicin that the tree produces, which is used in common pain relievers like Tylenol. The tree grows best around water at Lake San Rivers. A branch from a willow can be planted and grow a completely new tree. Broken trees and branches very easily grow back anew. This, combined with the healing abilities, all tie into how the tree is seen to represent emerging stronger from pain, growing and healing along the way. In Celtic culture, willow is mostly associated with water, the moon, female magic, and premonition. The moon and water go hand in hand due to where they grow, but its connotations with the triple goddess and magic all correlate together to have very strong magical abilities. Ron's wood type actually does not match with his birthday in the Celtic tree zodiac, like Harry's does. Willow resides over those born from April 15th until May 12th, and Ron was born in March, March 1st actually. Some cultures would make charms and remedies out of Willow to protect against bitterness and jealousy which is a trait that Ron often dealt with and struggled with throughout the series. Ollivander notes the healing powers of these wands, but states that these wands tend to choose those with great insecurities, and emphasizes that those insecurities are often unwarranted. They can produce advanced, nonverbal magic, and are often desired due to the wood's beauty. My Willow wands have consistently selected those of greatest potential, rather than those who feel they have little to learn. He who has furthest to travel will go fastest with Willow. That's a quote from Ollivander from Pottermore, old school Pottermore. Combining some muggle and wizarding culture, I think that this wand is a nice fit for Ron. He is at times riddled with insecurities about his family, his Quidditch abilities, and about having such successful people all around him. He has insecurities about his family's social situation, his own accomplishments, and strives to be noticed in such a large family. I think that this wand suits Ron since it will help him grow along the way throughout his journey. While Willow is usually related to female witchcraft, I think we can at least make the connection that out of the trio, Ron has the most experience with the wizarding world being a pureblood and raised in that culture. Regardless of if you believe in divination, unlike Hermione, Ron tends to make guesses that often turn out to be right, such as the fake prophecies he and Harry made up in Goblet of Fire that predicted the three tasks, or him guessing from Harry's tea leaves that Harry would someday work in the ministry, which he later does as an Auror. So if you want to consider the popular theory that Ron is an accidental seer, it makes sense why a willow would choose him. And his core is even more perfect, I think. His his core is unicorn hair, which is the most faithful of all wands. Unicorn hair wands are least likely to turn to the dark arts, present the most consistent magic, and while they're not always as powerful as other cores, the wielder and wood combination can affect that. They are also the most loyal of wands, and will stick with their chosen through and through. Regardless of if they lose the wand in battle, give it away, lose it, or deserve it. This is exceptionally important for several wands in the future, and for Ron. His first wand is a pre-owned wand, belonging to his elder brother Percy, and that's also a unicorn core. So is it any wonder that sometimes he would have not the best luck when casting spells with a wand that didn't choose him? 
Ollivander says that some disadvantages of this core type is that they sometimes need replacing, unlike other cores. They are very tenderly emotioned wands, and he says they can be prone to melancholy. Unicorns are described by Scamander in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them as beautiful beasts, pure white when fully grown, and the foals are start off golden initially and turn silver as they reach maturity. Unicorns have been popular throughout all of human history, from ancient Greece to the Scottish coat of arms. In Greek accounts, unicorns are actually considered historical accounts, not mythology. They believed unicorns could be found native to India and that the horn had healing properties. It was thought that the horn could purify toxic water, cure poison, rejuvenate, and heal. A unicorn horn was often given to kings or sold for these benefits, but usually the horns were actually narwhal tusks. In modernity, we have some guesses as to what this animal actually was. The most common actual real-life unicorn is a rhino. There are dozens of Renaissance depictions and references to unicorns. They are often shown as white, horse-like creatures with a large spiraling horn from their forehead and sometimes the tail of a lion. It is commonly believed that unicorns are a symbol of purity and thus can only be caught or tamed by a maiden virgin. They are gentle, pure of heart, and seeing one is a blessing. In the wizarding world, they are native to Scotland, and that's where Hogwarts School is located, so students are often educated about them. While in the series, unicorns favor female attention and distrust males, the most well-known unicorn wands that we know of are actually owned by wizards. So it's sort of surprising, at least to me, that Willow and Unicorn are mostly influenced by female magic, and both of these stats chose Ron. They are least likely to turn to the dark arts, and can even cease to function if forced to go against their nature. This coincides with their purity throughout history. While I normally say that wands have very little to do with height, Ron's wand certainly matches his height. In the series, he is described as rather tall, especially compared to Harry and Hermione, and his personality and skill as a wizard certainly matches having a longer wand. So Ron's wand being 14 inches simply makes sense to me. And we do not know the flexibility of his wand, and since it is a rather tricky stat to place to begin with, I'll leave that to your imagination. But if you want to let me know in a comment down below or on Instagram what you think it would be, let me know, we can chat about it. And I might cover it in a later episode. So overall, I think that this wand perfectly suits Ron. He is a true and loyal friend with pure intentions. He is able to support and calm Harry and Hermione and is a wizard of skill far surpassing his own beliefs. I think for all of Willow and Unicorn's healing proficiencies, ability to surpass expectations, and known as a mark of character of those pure of heart, that this is a great wand for him. Well, that wraps up Ron's wand analysis. So let me know what you think, or if you have any additions or questions. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and share this channel with your wizarding loved ones. You can keep up to date on all of Amber's wands by subscribing here or on Instagram at oliveambers.wands. That's O-L-L-I-V-A-M-B-E-R-S dot wands. On Instagram, I'll be doing polls and other interactive things for future episodes, so I really hope to see you there. Now, let's thank Corey for editing and producing this. Without you, these viewers would be seeing far too many stumbles and rambles. So thank you, Corey. Thank you all for watching. Come chat with me here in the comments or on Instagram. I'd love to hear from you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. See you next time. Bye.